all life consists of cells. We can see cells with a normal light microscope and maybe the nucleus, but the subcellular structures won't really be visible. Using an electron microscope, however, allows us to see far finer details, so we can see an image of these organelles. As such, these microscopes have a better resolving power and a higher resolution. We say we can calculate the actual size of a cell by knowing the magnification of the microscope. Magnification is equal to image size divided by object size. We put cells into two main groups. Eukaryotic cells have a nucleus in which their DNA is found. That's your plant and animal cells, for example. Prokaryotic cells don't have a nucleus. The cell membrane keeps everything inside the cell, but they're also semi or partially or selectively permeable, which means they allow certain substances to pass through. Plant cells have an extra cell wall made of cellulose, providing a rigid structure for them. Bacteria also have a cell wall, but it's not made of cellulose. Cytoplasm is the liquid that makes up the cell in which most chemical reactions take place. Mitochondria is the site of respiration. That's where energy is released for the cell to function. Ribosomes are the site of protein synthesis. That's where proteins are assembled. That's where amino acids are assembled into proteins. Plant cells also contain chloroplasts. That's the site of photosynthesis. They contain chlorophyll. Plant cells also have a permanent vacuole in which sap is stored. Bacteria multiply by binary fission. We can do a practical on this by producing a culture on agar in a petri dish using aseptic technique, that is making sure nothing else contaminates the culture. We lift the lid of the dish towards a flame, which causes other microbes in the air to move upwards and away from the dish, and it destroys them too. Using sterilised equipment, we can either put a drop of bacteria culture in the middle or spread it all around to create a lawn and put spots of different antibiotics on top instead. We put a few bits of tape around the dish to hold the lid on, but not all the way round, otherwise air won't get in and the bacteria will respire anaerobically. We don't want that. We incubate it at 25 degrees for a couple of days, say. Once the culture has grown, we can either calculate the size of the culture from an initial drop or the area in which bacteria did not grow or were killed by an antibiotic to then compare with others. In both cases, we use pi r squared or pi d squared over 4 to calculate the area of these circles. Eukaryotic cell nuclei contain DNA, which is stored in several chromosomes. Humans have 23 pairs of these in every nucleus, so we call them diploid cells. That's not the case for gametes, though, sperm and egg cells. They have just 23, not 23 pairs. They have half the amount, so therefore we call them haploid cells. New cells must constantly be made for growth and repair. They do this by duplicating by mitosis. Here's the process, the mitosis process. The genetic material is duplicated. The nucleus breaks down and one set of each chromosome pair is pulled to opposite sides of the cell. A new nucleus forms in each of these to house the copied chromosomes. We now have two identical cells. By the way, you might hear that the nucleus divides, which isn't quite right, but you'll get the mark if you put that. Cells specialise or differentiate depending on the function they need to fulfil. For example, nerve, muscle, root hair, xylem and phloem cells. Stem cells are those that haven't yet specialised. They're found in human and animal embryos and the meristems of plants. That's the top of the shoot. Stem cells are also made in your bone marrow throughout your life as well, but these ones only specialise into blood cells. We can use stem cells to combat conditions like diabetes and paralysis. In fact, right out of the movie The Island, people are now getting clones of themselves made, then harvesting the stem cells, as these won't be rejected by the person. Personally, I think this is a dystopian man-made horror beyond comprehension. You have to weigh up the ethical arguments for yourself. Cloning plants can be used to prevent species from becoming extinct or produce crops with specific characteristics. Diffusion is the movement of molecules or particles from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. We say they move down the concentration gradient, like a ball just rolling down a hill. It'll do it by itself. That doesn't require any energy input, so we say it's passive. This will happen across a semi or partially or selectively permeable membrane if the holes in the membrane are large enough for the molecules to move through. For example, for most cells, water molecules can pass through, but glucose molecules will not, at least not by diffusion anyway. Osmosis is the name specifically given to the movement, we could say diffusion, but we say movement of water across such a membrane. For example, if there's a higher concentration of glucose outside a cell, the glucose can't diffuse in to balance the concentration. So instead, the water moves out of the cell, resulting in a decrease in its mass. The rate of diffusion and osmosis can be increased by increasing the difference in concentrations, increasing the temperature, 
or increasing the surface area of the membrane across which this happens. This is why the villi cells in your small intestine are lumpy, as well as alveoli, the air sacs in your lungs, and root hair cells, for example, too. They all have a very high surface area to volume ratio. The practical for osmosis goes as follows. Cut equal sized cylinders from a potato or another vegetable, weigh them and place them in test tubes with varying concentrations of sugar solution. After a day or so, we remove them, dab the excess water off their surface and re-weigh. We calculate percentage change in mass. If it's lighter than it was before, this is a negative change in mass. We plot these percentages against sugar concentration and we draw a line of best fit. Where this crosses the x-axis is the concentration at which no change in mass should have occurred, so no osmosis. So this means this must be the same as the concentration inside the potato itself. Glucose and other nutrients and minerals can move through a membrane by active transport, whereby carrier proteins in the membrane use energy to move substances through the membrane. As there's energy used in this case, this can actually move them against the concentration gradient. For example, moving mineral ions into plant root hair cells. So I hope you found that helpful. Leave a like and a comment if you did. And click on the card to take you to the playlist for all of the papers. And don't forget to check out the Science Shorts app to help you test your knowledge.